Hello everyone, Mayor Tom Carnes here. We're in the City Council Chambers and our little studio that we have set up for the return of the Crossroads of Lincoln Park show. Uh, with me today, I have our two gurus of economic development um, for the City of Lincoln Park. Both came to us through a nationwide search for a downtown development authority and economic development director uh, approximately a year, year and a half ago. Uh, both of them have extended histories with economic development. One that has been with it for 30, 40 years, and one that is just starting out of the gate. So we have some good things that are coming. Um, first, I'd like to introduce you to, to both of them. We have Mr. Malish, Carl Malish. Malish. Hello. Sorry, I messed that up every time. <laughs> and we have Timmy, um, Timmy Savet. And so I think that we're going to start out with the, the senior member. Uh, so Carl, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to be in Lincoln Park. Okay, thank you, Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, yeah, I uh, have been involved in planning and community development for probably longer than I can remember, something like 35 to 40 years. Uh, I did most of my practice in uh, southern Indiana. Um, I am a, a former Michigan native. I grew up in the city of Detroit, uh, went to high school at the University of Detroit Jesuit High School, and I graduated with a degree in urban planning from Michigan State University. Um, along the way, I also received a master's degree in community development from the University of Louisville. Um, I um, uh, found this opportunity uh, during the pandemic. Uh, my wife and I had retired and moved to Florida, and uh, I was uh, wanting to do something, getting a little cabin fever, as it were, and uh, she said, why don't you look around and see what's available? So uh, I saw the ad uh, that had been posted with the city of Lincoln Park, uh, polished off my resume and submitted it, and here I am now. Thanks, Carl. Um, if you'd pass that to, to Tim Marie. And Tim Marie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Timory Sweat. I'm the assistant director of the DDA and EDC here. I was born and raised here in the metro Detroit suburbs and in my later years decided to go back to school and received a bachelor's in urban and regional studies followed by a master's in urban planning and I also went back to get a graduate certificate in economic development. I came to Lincoln Park during the pandemic like Carl. Um, almost a year ago, it'll be a year next month, and I've really enjoyed my time here. I'm learning a lot, and getting to put all of that education into practice is fantastic. All right, and Lincoln Park is rather fortunate because both of these folks were finalists in the um, DDA and Economic Development Director search, and it was the, that Carl won out, but thought that it would be a fantastic thing if we could bring Timory in at the same time for her to gain experience and then to be um, work with Carl on developing many different things that we have planned for the city. Now, I'd like to ask you both as we go into this that Lincoln Park has um, some issues as far as um, buildings not being filled and our spaces not being utilized properly. So if you guys just came in. Why didn't you tell me first the um, problems that you observed? Okay, um, I'll give a little stab at that. Uh, yeah, when I uh, first came into the city of Lincoln Park, and actually when I did my research in advance of accepting the position, uh, I noticed a few things. Uh, number one, Lincoln Park is an entering suburb of Detroit. Um, Number two, the city probably had its uh, pinnacle in terms of uh, development and for that matter being built out uh, about the mid-1970s. Uh, since then, uh, the 
population, unfortunately, has been in a relative decline. But we had some good news with the release of the recent 2020 census. The population has increased about 2,500 people. Uh, it was uh, about 37,500 uh, in 2010, and today it's a tad over uh, 40,000. Um, why is population important? Um, what's, what's so special about growth or decline? Well, from an economic development standpoint, uh, it makes it harder to persuade people to invest in a community if the population is on the decline. The fact that our population has increased very recently is a good sign, and it's indicative of the kind of message we want to send out to the, uh, to the marketplace. Um, we, ha we do have empty buildings in the downtown. We have uh, some others uh, scattered about town. And uh, those all are good targets for investment by entrepreneurs and businesses that are starting out. Um, I don't think we need to go wholesale and just uh, start acquiring real estate and tearing down buildings and things of that nature. We have a built environment uh, that can be rehabilitated and uh, occupied with some new entrepreneurs. With respect to entrepreneurs, another thing that we discovered in analyzing the census information is that we have a very large and growing Hispanic slash Latinx population. Um, you know, you can say what you want to about uh, people moving into the community, but I will tell you that the Hispanic Latinx population is very industrious, they're very entrepreneurial in spirit, and quite frankly, I see that population as being part of the future of Lincoln Park. Okay, Jim Marie, uh, yeah. your thoughts as you, as you came into Lincoln Park, because you're not from this area. I um, know I grew up in Westland and I now live in Detroit um, and have for the last 12 years. But similar to Carl, I definitely did my research before even um, moving forward with the application and um, make sure it was somewhere that I wanted to work. And it was, absolutely. Yeah, I went through every plan that had been developed in probably the last 20 years. And something that really stuck out to me at the time was a lack of implementation, not through fault of trying, but there have been roadblocks um, for a lot of the plans, and so that was a major issue that I saw you know, coming into the job. Um, once I got here and I had a chance, I like to explore the area. I like to go, if I have to go visit one of the businesses, I like to walk so I can get to know the area better. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed through that is a lack of what, what we would call placemaking. Um, so describe placemaking. So placemaking, um, to give examples of it, if you think of cities like Wyandotte, Royal Oak, where you create an, a creative and place that people desire to be to sit and eat, or where you, you know, put a mural up or public art displays, or um, and placemaking has a whole host of things. Um, but I, I've noticed and we've pinpointed a lot of underutilized not utilized um, locations in the downtown that could really use you know, that type of activity in them. So those were probably my biggest observations that in you know, getting the streets uh, safer for walking as far as not safety as far as people, but safety as far as vehicular traffic is the other yeah, bicycles, big and, issue and that I see. Too. Yes, so that would be the other kind of thing that right. needs to be worked on. See, I'm you guys, I grew up in, in Lincoln Park, so I've been here since all the way through the 60s. And the, um, not the heyday, because I feel the heyday is yet to come, but the times in which the um, J.C. Penney Plaza, as I call it, and then the, the Sears Plaza, and then the Sears building itself. And as I go through these, several years that I've been mayor, that is the question that, that all comes up. I mean, first it was with the, where the shopping center was at Sears, and then with Sears closing a couple years ago, what is going on with that? So if you guys have information on the two shopping centers, share that so that everybody has an idea of what's, uh, what's transpiring. Certainly, Mayor. 
Okay, so yes, we're uh, we've done some preliminary. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, just kind of go over a few things that we've been looking at uh, in the way of very foundational efforts. We're we're actually putting together some plans and doing a lot of under the radar work uh, to try to figure out how to stimulate reasonable redevelopments at some of these sites that you've mentioned. First, the Sears site. Um, there's 35 acres there. Uh, granted, the Sears building per se is still there. Uh, we've had conversations with uh, Grant Sakwa ownership interests, with, which owns about uh, roughly 15 of those acres, and with uh, Seritage that owns uh, and wants to redevelop about another 17 acres or so. Um, one thing that, that's not going to happen uh, because of uh, just the change in retailing, the pandemic, and all those factors combined, it's very, very unlikely that we'll ever see another mall or a big box development at that location. Uh, realistically, uh, what we think will happen, and this is in conversations with uh, these various people, and the, and the project that, uh, that we're really going to focus on when we get into the Southfield Road Corridor study and plan, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, is a mixed-use development on that Sears site. Uh, why mixed-use development? Well, we'll first explain what yeah. a mixed-use is. Okay, mixed-use development would be a combination of residential, uh, could be in multifamily fashion, uh, two or three stories, attached housing. Could be owner, could be rental. Uh, the mix comes in when you take a few uh, sites, commercial pads, and put them at appropriate locations within the, the footprint of the development. So it's mixed residential, uh, typically in a higher density, and uh, with some commercial aspects uh, for a little shop, coffee house, things of that nature. But um, what we're, why we're focusing on this property and emphasizing and are delighted to see that people are thinking about uh, some higher density of residential is because if we develop some new residential in this community, and again, we've been pretty much built out since the mid-70s, if we build some more residential, then we're going to have more people living here. When we have more people living here, uh, there's more expendable income to spend in, on retail services and goods. That's going to entice uh, the uh, private sector to make developments in those shops and other things that support residential life. So that's what we're contemplating in the context of the Sears project. Uh, let's, you know, let's go uh, a few uh, thousand feet uh, east of that and let's talk about uh, one of the very first uh, malls that was developed uh, anywhere in the state of Michigan, probably in the Midwest, and that was Lincoln, uh, the Lincoln Plaza. Uh, that property was recently purchased at a tax sale a few years ago. We have uh, some people that are trying to rehabilitate it. Uh, there's some challenges with some of those buildings. For instance, uh, the, uh, the building that used to have the Farmer Jacks, the one that has two or three stories in height. Yeah, the one on the corner of yeah, Ford. And then the yeah, it, it has some environmental issues and some other uh, factors that would make it really difficult to redevelop. Uh, if the ownership would choose to kind of reevaluate that and uh, get some uh, environmental studies done, we might be able to help them uh, either, well, certainly assess the building, possibly help them remove it, and create a pad for some other new development at that location. Well, didn't the uh, DDA or, and the EDC, yes. they, they funded a study that was on that property, that, or, or yes. were you headed there? Yeah, okay. yeah, I was headed there. But the good news is there's uh, several acres of undeveloped parking lot that are not going to be used for the type of occupancy that are currently occurring in the commercial strip there. So we, we look at it and we see that there's surplus land there. And we also look at that as a possibility for some more housing development. Again, multifamily, 
maybe a couple stories tall, could be owner, could be rental, you know, we'll see what the market bears. But again, that's that's another large piece of property. We figured there were six to seven acres back there that we could reasonably release from the overall development for housing development and uh, still have plenty of space for parking for that strip center that fronts on Ford Street. And these are all conceptual ideas. That, 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 they're yes. not, we, we have nothing's in, in stone about that. That's correct. You know, we've, we've got, we're, we're developing a good plan. Once we get the plans completely formalized and we know what kind of development strategy we need to use and what kind of incentives we might have to uh, bring to bear, then that's when we'll be in a position to start talking turkey with developers uh, to see if, if we can persuade some of them to make the investments that we're looking for in the community. See, there's a, a thing with that parking lot or that shopping center is, it, is right in the neighborhood. I mean, yes. you just have a, a fence or a wall that separates several of them. And that's got to be an advantage. That's got to be a, a selling point for, for someone out there. Yeah, I, I, I would think so. You know, um, and, you know, the, the mall per se, while it has some issues, you know, it was built quite a while ago, uh, it's got to be upgraded and modernized with, uh, you know, different issues that relate to the building code that I'm not in a position to really speak of. But uh, they do exist. But um, this, this space, this parking lot, uh, is really kind of, I don't want to say derelict, but it's not really appealing. And I think that the neighborhood would uh, benefit greatly by getting some housing mass developed in that parking lot instead of having a sea of rundown asphalt. And it would make a nice transition between the single family neighborhood that runs along Emmons all the way to Dix and this particular uh, Lincoln Park shopping center. Well, I think that the neighbors that have been long suffering for uh, 20 years anyway, as things things went into decline. Yes. Anything that we're able to, to do there will be, will be welcome. It's kind of exciting too. Yes. It's, has it been done in this area? I don't, I don't think so. So we have the space. We can make that, it happen. That's correct. It, the space is there. The land is there. And it just requires our will to move that forward. Now, part of the things that, that you've done since you've come here is an attempt to get all the, the boards and commissions, such so as the Planning Commission, the Community Improvement Commission, uh, the Economic Development Corporation, the Downtown Development Authority, the City Council, um, the Parks and Rec Commission, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Dangerous Building Board, all to get, and, and the assessors and folks all together in one virtual room um, to discuss what they did and then to what, how, what we can do together to make Lincoln Park better. So yes. can you touch on that? Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, yes, that, that is a, uh, having a joint meeting among city council and all of the development agencies that have a bearing on the city is considered uh, by all accounts and other professionals in the field as a best practice. Uh, best practice under the redevelopment ready communities. And we're attempting we, to be one. That's exactly right. And I've got to hand it to Timory. Uh, she's really uh, approached that, uh, that that's problem that we're trying to solve and that's to incorporate best practices across the board in our development and redevelopment procedures and plans in the city. Uh, the meeting that we had, which you called, Mayor, and we're gratified that you did so from a professional standpoint, uh, we've had two excellent meetings. Uh, the first meeting that we had last March uh, or April was a kind of a get to know you meeting. Uh, we had uh, very good attendance from all those organizations that you named, uh, and we all uh, left with your assignment, uh, and that was to examine our current master plan for city development, which was adopted in November of 2019. You know, it's about two years old. Um, so then we had a follow-up meeting at the end of September, which again, you convened, 
And I think you've uh, put down the marker that we're going to meet at least twice a year, uh, semi-annually, if you will. And we are going to talk about development issues and what you know different groups are doing. At that last meeting, um, you know, we discussed uh, some of the contents that was in the master plan, and I think everybody understood it. Nobody was surprised. You know, uh, organizations like the Planning Commission and, for that matter, the City Council uh, went through that process, and they were part and parcel of the development and uh, adoption of that plan. Um, one other thing that we talked about, uh, which uh, we'll be discussing uh, momentarily at an Economic Development Commission meeting, or a corporation, excuse me, is the Southfield Road Corridor Study. And I've got to uh, sing out some credit to uh, James Krizan, our city manager. He has been working with uh, the Treasury Department of the state of Michigan to help fund that study and plan. And that's a, a, a study and plan that's going to examine the Southfield Road Corridor. From well, what is the, tell yeah. me what the Southfield Road yeah. Corridor is. Yeah, the Southfield Road Corridor is uh, the roadway and the land uses and the properties on either side of the corridor. And the reach of that is from the uh, Allen Park, Lincoln Park corporate limits eastward through the city of Lincoln Park. Uh, through the Fort Street intersection, uh, down East Southfield, as I call it, uh, then across the Ecorse River into the city of Ecorse, and all the way down through Ecorse to West Jefferson and the Detroit Riverfront. Yes, and you know why are we looking at that? Uh, you know we've had some uh, pretty good uh, redevelopment happen. You might say from I-75 to the Allen Park. Uh, uh, city limits, uh, Allen Park, Lincoln Park city limits, you know, with the exception of our primary Sears site. But uh, in particular, the uh, East Southfield Road corridor has been kind of a depressed area for a number of years. And uh, we're really trying to figure out what kind of land use decisions and, uh, that we should be making with that corridor. You know, what would be a good way to use the existing built uh, environment along that corridor for good economic purpose? I don't think we're a community that has a, a huge pot of money so we can just say, hey, let's uh, buy everything up, wipe it out, and start from scratch. The, the wiser approach, and there's a lot of uh, literature on the subject, and a lot of people are approaching a corridor uh, in this manner. It's look at the buildings that you have, figure out what the issues are with them uh, with respect to building codes, and try to figure out what type of uses you can place in those old industrial buildings that, that are prevalent along that corridor. You know, maker space, uh, small scale uh, manufacturing, things of that nature. Well, that should key in then with our, um, with our downtown, I mean, yeah. down, down Fourth Street also. That's correct, a little bit. And yeah. then you have uh, in Ecorse, primarily Pepper Park, has a large project there that they're developing um, in the area, I think, from the Detroit River to uh, our border on the creek. And part of it is where, where we're at, too. Yes. And that's just about a block outside. So I would think that that, at some point, would merge into that project, too, as a, I'd expect other things to do so. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, uh, by the way, you know, that's one of the reasons why we thought uh, partnering up with eCourse uh, through this uh, undertaking made a whole lot of sense. You know, you don't want to sit there and develop up to your city limits and then uh, just have a dividing line and the hell with everything outside. So you we're, know, we're, yeah. city, we're city, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, hence the crossroads. Yeah, we're, exactly. We're in the middle of yeah. you know, Allen yeah. Park, wind that e-course. Exactly. So, so you know, we, we are, although the email hasn't gone out, we're soliciting some membership on the uh, stakeholder team from Allen Park. We already received lists of uh, people that are going to be involved with this overall study plan from e-course, and we're moving along. We've got uh, a schedule, a draft schedule that we're going to discuss this evening. Um, we... Uh, have identified 
who we need to enlist as stakeholders. Obviously, we'll have a little discussion about that as well. And we are going to be moving forward in earnest with this Southfield Road corridor study and plan uh, within the next week or two. Uh, I also want to mention that part of the engagement is not only looking at uh, the built environment along the traveled corridor, but we're also doing extensive traffic studies uh, with uh, traffic and uh, road configurations along the Southfield Road corridor. Um, all the way from the uh, Allen Park, Lincoln Park uh, corporate limits through Lincoln Park, through Ecourse, all the way to West Jefferson. Uh, we've noticed on some regional plans that um, Allen Park, uh, although it's not developed this way yet, they have uh, the call out a bicycle route on Southfield Road. And then it abruptly ends at our common city limits. And, you know, we see that that uh, Southfield Road corridor uh, would be an excellent addition to the regional bicycle plan uh, and connect this down to West Jefferson, which is also a bicycle route that's not only in the plan, but it's already developed as such. Yeah, I went so, to uh, uh, Jefferson out by uh, Belle Isle. Yes. And they have a nice bike route that, that's set up for that. Yeah. As Tim Ray may be able to yeah. say a little, you know, so that's where your, your strength is, is, is with those. And yeah. we'd like to, um, we don't want things to just end at the, at the Lincoln Park border, but we want to extend them through. Right, and it actually picks back up at the e-course border, the um, regional bike plans do. So we just need to... We need yeah. to but we have to come up with a plan to be able yeah. to show SEMCOG that... You know, we would like that in our yeah. community. Well, what we're talking about with this is a foundation for what's to come in the future. You have to do your groundwork yes. first. You have to find out what you got and what the possibilities are before you before you take action. I know that um, we're talking of making Lincoln Park a walkable area. What we mean by that is uh, places where they where they want to stop in. bookstore, coffee shop, a small restaurant, uh, bistros, and those types of things. And one place after another, where, where there, um, whether a tattoo place is going to come in, and, and that, just make it to where it, it's fun. Maybe and you have, see tattoo have, places have and some live, live shows. really nice downtown yes, now. I mean, it's not, it's not the... <laughs> Idea of tattoos from 50 years ago is not what is what is taking place here. But so we're talking about doing a lot of groundwork yes. and stuff. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the fun stuff that's going on through the, the DDA and the EDC. And I think that you were the uh, person behind a lot of the fun things, similar to the, the chocolate walk. Uh, unfortunately, our Cinco de Mayo didn't uh, didn't happen this year. But talk about just uh, some of the plans that, that we have for fun events. Um. So we had actually planned, and we're really excited to do it next year, a downtown bash. And we envision this as an end of summer, starting of a school year event, with an adult four-square tournament. Uh, this okay. was the brainchild of the city manager, actually, the tournament part. Um, so that would be called the Down River Brawl. And it would, so most communities in the area are actually doing I think it's called pickleball tournaments. We wanted to do something different, something to bring people specifically into Lincoln Park, get them into Lincoln Park, get them spending their money at the stores right around the area. So we wanted to put this in the downtown, and it was going to be located behind Painter's Supply. Um, so which on Forest. Right at, at Forest, which is close to Fort and Southfield. Yep, and we got as far into the planning as, you know, we met with Chief of Police, we it got it all okay to shut down the road, but unfortunately the COVID numbers started going up. But we're really excited to do it next year. Well, you're talking about people my age from this area, and there's uh, been many a four square games in the middle of the streets <laughs> and, and all the side streets because that's what you that's what you did. Yes, it's, it's fun things. Now we have um, uh, Christmas time coming up. Yes, and there is usually. 
Christmas sing-along where we will be at the downtown light up at this. The Christmas tree lights, right? That's what I'm talking about. So are we planning on having that type of an event this year? We are. We are. Um, myself and Ashley with City Management, we've kind of become partners in crimes on some of these events that are coming up in the downtown. And we're going to have Ashley on one of these uh, Yes, yes, shows. she has to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You promised me that she would. Um, but so Ashley and I, actually, we are trying to meet with the Historical Museum tomorrow to sit down, get a better idea of what's been done in the past, what's worked really well, what we might be able to incorporate into it, something new. Um, still doing everything that, you know, obviously Christmas, Christmas caroling, that's tradition. So um, keep the tradition so, maybe with a new twist Yeah, to it. so we actually spent part of the day today watching the videos from the past um, Christmas tree light lightings and looking at pictures and um, evalu we evaluated how much bigger the one tree is getting out there and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. We met with um, the company today that will be putting all the lights up for us um, to discuss that with them. Have a nice display up. I think yes. we started that last year. But we're really excited about we're excited to plan it and okay and i'm sure in the future we'll have because there's more things coming up uh, cinco de mile and talk a walk as we mentioned those are things that we are looking to to continue yes um, i think i wanted to switch gears just just a little bit and uh, you've been here both of you have been here for about a year and you've seen things that are developing um why don't you tell me where you would like to see the city in, in five to ten years? Or we no, why do you? Do you have to go um, Obviously, being in economic development, I'd like to see economic growth. I would like to see more businesses, like you said, bookstores and coffee shops, and um, to be able to walk from business to business in our downtown. Um, I would like to see, I think there's so much potential for placemaking opportunity. I mean, we have the, the bones there for it. Um, one of the primary things that I've been focused on and I see as a, a must is more public participation. Getting people into our meetings, getting people to voice their opinions, good opinions and bad opinions. I mean, getting people in here and that'll give us a, more, a clearer idea of where we want to be. Because really it's up to the residents that's who we need to be focusing on, you know, their desires. But So getting more people involved, more people involved in the events. Um, I would love to see eventually having an event committee through the DDA um, that can you know, really make these events soar the more people you have working on them. I've heard it said that if you build it, they will come. And that's, that's the idea. So that's something we've been working on or that I've been working on extensively is our public participation plan which is part of the RRC qualifications. Um, and it's something I think is it, that's going to be a game changer for things here and starting to get things done. The more people understand why things go on the way that they do, why things take the time that they do, um, people can be more on board of it and be a part of it. And then across. Thank you. Carl, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, so uh, five years from now, um, besides seeing some of this housing developed that we talked about, and there's some other things that others in City Hall are working on. Uh, John Myers with Building Authority has a list of a uh, hundred or so buildable lots that could be built with houses on them scattered about the city. And you, you mentioned John Myers, yeah. who is our city's building official. That's office. correct. Yes, there is. So that everyone knows, there's weekly development meetings where all the all the people get get together, all the, the building department, the city manager, uh, the planner, and they discuss ongoing projects. So, so it's not to where they they don't know each other, but they they meet. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but you know, housing aside, and I, that's got to be a priority, and I think it's doable without question within the five year period. More new housing in Lincoln Park. Okay, second, any thriving, viable city 
has a core, a downtown core that is in thriving condition. We, uh, you know, we're doing placemaking that was brought up by Timory because we're trying to create some uh, interesting spots in the downtown and some of these vacant lots that are there and other nooks and crannies. In addition to that, we are also, we had the good fortune to get a grant from SEMCOG, Southeast Michigan uh, Council of Governments, so that we could do a traffic equity study on the Fort Street corridor from Outer Drive to Champaign. So we not only have the uh, Southfield corridor, but right. we have another study coming for, the, for, for Fort right. Street. We, in effect, are studying traffic at the crossroads. And what we're, we're talking yes. about traffic is because yes. the speed limit has went up from, it used to be 30 miles an hour, where it's now 45. Yes. And then the potential for yeah. you know, pedestrians and... Right. It, right. Those speed limits uh, and the fact that you post it at 45 and some people tend to even go faster, that becomes a difficulty for pedestrians to either cross the street or maneuver or whatever. Uh, so we want to make the area, the corridor, not only Southfield, but also Fort Street, more desirable, more amenable for multimodal, including pedestrian, bicycling, and even improvements to mass transit, our bus stops. So that's what's meant by traffic equity. It's looking at a corridor and saying, shouldn't this be used for more than simply moving cars and trucks? You know, aren't there other modes of transportation or mobility, rather, that uh, need to be accommodated? So that's what we're trying to do. We want the downtown, the heart of the downtown, the crossroads, to not only be good for moving traffic, but also for pedestrians. Why? Because if the environment is more sustainable and safe for pedestrians, you're going to have better opportunities for people to open up shops and actually have walk-in traffic. And so that's, you know, that's really what I think is doable within the next five years. Um, and if we can do that, I think that is foundational and that will create a suitable environment for those investments that we want in economic development, particularly in the downtown. Yeah, sounds good. I'm going to switch gears on you again. Yes. Um, we're talking about development in downtown and vacant buildings and, and things. I always thought that we were ripe for um, development coming down from um, what they call the, the shops on the hill in Allen Park and then the area coming, coming north or south into town um, along Dix. But let's, let's put that just aside for a second, because I see good things coming. Yes. Thanks to you guys, but good things are coming. But there's a vacant building. Um, somebody wants to come in there. What does somebody have to do to do that? We have, uh, say, an empty building that we have on, on Fort Street. If they have this idea that they've been generating their dream for, for several years, and now they've They've come into a little bit of money and they're, and they're ready to go about and they want a specific building here. What do you recommend to, to people to, to start on? Mayor, I'm very pleased that you asked that question because the one thing that they should not do that, that happens almost all the time is that they immediately uh, run out and either purchase a property or lease it and then they, then they come into City Hall and expect things to just flow from there. They need to stop for a minute. They need to think about what, what it is they want to do. They have an idea. Do they have a, a plan? Maybe not. That's where we can come in handy. It would be really advisable for anybody with the idea, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, to come into our office and discuss their idea with Timory and me. We, we have, uh, we have insights from our previous experiences. Um, my wife was a business owner. She owned a daycare center. And guess what? <laughs> I was her partner. 
So, you know, I have some degree of business sense. Uh, I've uh, gone through the National Development Council. I have a uh, 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 financial certificate or something of that nature. I can't remember uh, the exact acronym now. But uh, I've been through this, and I can help people and steer them in the right direction. There are agencies that can help a would-be entrepreneur develop a business plan. Once they uh, develop a business plan and they understand uh, how much it's going to cost to develop and uh, you know whether it can make it or not, then they're probably in a position to begin uh, searching out uh, the uh, zoning or planning and zoning commission and uh, the building authority to find out exactly what they're going to have to do. Uh, at the same time, you know, they might be uh, looking around for places. There's probably a different story with every building that's on the ground today. And when you start changing uses and the like, uh, you have to be methodical about it. And you have to have those early discussions down the hall with building and planning. Well, even before you are looking at the businesses, it would make sense to, to come in and have a yes. conversation. Yes, with, with you because there's there's hidden costs that go in here. I'm not going to say that um, in years past, I thought that if I have an idea, I have the money to go into the business, and I could open it up, and then I would be I would be good. But there are um, zoning things that says that certain businesses can open, certain businesses can't. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't change the zoning or get it get it approved, but that takes the money and that takes takes time. And if you're looking at coming in and, and opening up and you have the money and it's there and then all of a sudden all these little roadblocks are coming up, then uh, that money goes away fast. So I yes. think if, if anybody is planning on, on doing this, then seriously, they need to have a conversation with, with these two folks. It doesn't cost anything. Um, they don't get anything out of that other than the satisfaction of seeing the, the city grow. But their experience in doing this is that not only can you come in, but they may have ideas of uh, a building that, that suits you or another vocation that may, may work for you. So the, the conversation needs to start with these folks, and you can also uh, phone them, and we'll have the, the phone number and everything on. Tim, so go ahead. Even if somebody thinks that they're not ready to come talk to us, maybe they don't think their idea is formulated enough. Five years out or something. We have connections. We have been in contact with groups that we can direct people to that will help them do a feasibility study or that will help them. And it's, there's no cost for any of that. They, it's a nonprofit yep. um, that can really help them see is is this something that's doable or is it not before they even put cause putting together a business plan in itself costs money so they it's prior even to that step um but like carl said the one thing you don't want to do is to go out and sign a lease or purchase a property until you're sure and we're seeing it we're seeing that happen a lot well i mean and not to quash anybody's ideas but you want this to be a smooth transition yes. you don't want to do all the work and invest all the money, and then come upon um, an issue that was there all the time that you need to correct first. So that is what uh, these two, two right. folks are for. And that would be a good, because not only will they they give you advice, but they will introduce you to the, the people that you will be dealing with, whether it would be the, uh, the building department. And then as we go through this, they would be advocates for the success of your, your business. So let's just say that they're in your corner and they want you to succeed. Absolutely. And that's what really uh, economic development is, is all about. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do some closing comments uh, from Timory and, and Carl. Oh, no, you have the microphone, go ahead. Um, so I'm really excited to be doing this. I think it's a great idea um, just to we get these ideas out there, let people know what's going on. I think a lot of times people don't see construction starting on the, Sears, well, the former Sears site or the plaza, but that doesn't mean things aren't happening. A lot of things are happening without a lot of works going into it. And um, so I think it'll be reassuring for people. I hope it is. 
Um, and I'm excited for, you know, I'm excited about the placemaking and making it walkable. And um, that's more my forte um, and what you know, my interest is just in general, not just here, but in my own neighborhood. Um, so getting those things going and getting people involved, I, that would be the main thing. I, I, I think people don't understand the power of that is get involved. If you have a few extra minutes, you know, in your week, come to a meeting, but hear what's going on, voice your opinion, and they can you know, be entertaining. Well, <laughs> but you know, consider coming and volunteering for events. Or you know, we want to keep these events going, but you know, we we definitely need help with them, and we want to be able to do more, to do more fun things, to have more programming for kids, to have things going on in the downtown more frequently and consistently. Well, if you want a successful city, then it's everybody's responsibility to change. Absolutely. That's why I, I look into it, as you as you said very well. Okay, Carl? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, um, as I said at the outset, um, I've been dealing with this uh, profession called planning and community development for a number of years. And uh, I've always... Uh, had a lot of uh, energy and passion for it. I still do, uh, despite the fact that, you know, when I put this uh, project here in Lincoln Park uh, in perspective, it's probably going to be the last uh, major endeavor that I'll be involved in. Um, we've got lots of balls in the air. We're juggling lots of projects. Uh, lots of initiatives. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes work going on. I've got to emphasize what Timory was talking about in terms of volunteerism and getting more citizen involvement in this effort. Two people working for DDA and the EDC can't do all of this stuff. We need volunteers. In particular, the Downtown Development Authority, which models its program after the Main Street approach, a very tried and true approach to downtown revitalization, has four committees that need volunteers. There is a design committee that primarily works on uh, projects uh, on, the, on the streets, uh, placemaking, uh, pedestrian amenities, and things of that nature. There's also an economic restructuring committee, which works on projects to fill vacant buildings and the like. There is uh, a committee that deals with promotions and events. Uh, that's where all the fun stuff is, but you can't do it one off. You got to have help. You got to have citizen volunteers. And last but not least, there's a committee that deals with administrative issues and membership. Uh, we need the help. We need citizens to engage so that we can all work together to make this a success. Thank you, Tim Marie. Carl, um, basically what they're saying is, folks, you need to come in and get your feet wet. Do, do a small event, and then you might find that you like it, and then uh, develop a taste for it. And Because turnaround for the city is going to be up to, up to all of us. Thank Tim Marie and Carl for being with us today, and uh, until next time, Mayor Tom Turks. Good night.